wise thing to encourage other persons to come into the nursing profession, to come to schools like Tarif College that is um, offering quality first class training and the proof is in the results of our nine students. It's very imperative that as an institution we do our part to help and assist or to close up the gap that we find in the medical um, the shortage, so to speak. Um, we're very fortunate that the Public Hospital Authority has been tremendous in assisting us along with the Nursing Council. Marketing Manager Frederica Patton Thomas says there has been a high level of interest in the program from the community and a number of persons have registered. What I have been directing them to do to make sure that they're not wasting their money is to go on to a newly accredited um, agency, NACOP, that they will know that we are a registered institution under NACOP and we are one, the only other institution other than UB that offers the nursing program which we made history in the Bahamas with our nursing passing and being hired. Now the founder of the institution says the nursing program is now in the process of moving on from the associate level as the institution is waiting on final approvals. Persons enrolled would soon be able to receive a bachelor's degree. Italia Hall, ZNS Network News. The Ministry of Education suspending face-to-face -face classes for all primary, junior and senior high public schools as of Monday, May 25th through June 3rd, 2021. As for private institutions, well, some private schools on Grand Bahama will also suspend in-person instruction classes, while others say they will remain open. Rumiko Knowles has the details. On May 25th through June 3rd, all primary, junior and senior high public schools across the country will suspend face-to-face -face classroom instruction as mandated by the Ministry of Education. Several schools in the private sector on Grand Bahama are in agreement. On May 14th, head of Bishop Michael Eldon, the Anglican Central Education Authority Diocese of the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands issued a statement that notes that in an effort to minimize the spread of the virus as schools are now participating in national exams examinations, it is necessary to limit the number of students on their campuses. Therefore, as of May 25, 2021, all students in grades 1 through 11 will revert to full virtual classes for the remainder of the school year. The statement reads that all students will be required to return to campus on the days that they will write national or internal examinations. Students in pre-K and kindergarten will be allowed to continue with their face-to-face -face classes observing established protocols. Principal of Tabernacle Baptist Ashnell Bean says their school will also be closed, but not completely. Our students that are doing external exams, grades 3, 6, and 9, they will come to school face-to-face -face so that they can continue the face-to-face -face learning with their teachers. Because sometimes the virtual platform doesn't do justice for some students. They, they struggle. And so because our students have um, national exams, they're the students that we'll be bringing in face-to-face, -face. I think along with our kindergarten and first graders as well. As for the parents of that institution... They wish we wouldn't do virtual at all. They would like for the students to stay in school the whole time because it is a challenge with parents now having to find someone to watch their kids or because they have to be to work. You know, so, so it, it's a challenge all around. But not all private schools are closing their doors. Having remained virtual for a considerable amount of time, returning face-to-face -face in February of this year, officials at Sunland Baptist Academy say they will not be closed next week. They're distracted, you know, they're, they're not keeping up as they should, and they, they cried out that we really want them, you know, in-person, face-to-face instruction. She adds that parents of Sunland say the virtual mode isn't working for their kids. We would have sent out a communication to our parent, parents earlier this week. I think it was on Tuesday. Uh, our administrative team would have met. We would have consulted with uh, the COVID task force. And after taking into consideration all the aspects of what going into virtual at this time would mean, we decided that we would stay in full face-to-face -face mode of instruction. 
the principal believes that in-person instruction is most important at this time as they are preparing for internal and external exams. We were one of the schools here in Grand Bahama that stayed in the virtual mode the longest last semester. We didn't come out of virtual until around about the end of November uh, when we started our review and then went into, an ex in, into our examinations. During that course, you know, we listened to our parents. Many of them said, you know, virtual is just not working with their children. Um, they're not, they're distracted, you know, they, they're not keeping up as they should. And they, they cried out that we really want them, you know, in person, face-to-face -face instruction. Ramiko Knowles, ZNS Network News. Meanwhile, many residents in assisted living facilities have now adapted to a new way of life during the COVID-19 pandemic. Most nursing homes on Grand Bahama are not allowing visitors in in order to protect the elderly in those facilities. As Italia Hall tells us, residents and operators are taking advantage of the vaccine. Senior citizens are among those impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. For months, some seniors have not been able to see their family members and friends as they are considered to be among the most vulnerable when it comes to the deadly virus. Owner of Home Away From Home, Murphy Knoll says two residents of the home tested positive for COVID-19 and has since recovered. She adds that most residents of the home have been vaccinated. She has taken the jab as well. At first, I was really against the vaccine, but now I see why we need to take the vaccine so we can open up and everybody can socialize much better. And we're waiting now for our second dose. We'll be coming here next week. Owner of Roberta Senior Citizen Center, Alberta Hudson, says while there are some challenges, they are coping. We changed our rules and we were not letting in any visitors. And so far, I had 16 clients and everybody is COVID free. And all of my clients, except one, have been received the first vaccination and should be receiving the second by next week. She says she has received her first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine and believes that getting vaccinated is a step in the right direction in order to ensure that the elderly population remains safe. Staff members, about a third of them, have been vaccinated. Some of them are totally against it, but I'm sure the time will come when I will say, if you're not vaccinated, then you can't work here, so the choice will be yours. Over at Ocean View Retirement Home, there were no COVID-19 cases reported. Founder Agatha Thompson says all residents in that retirement home have been vaccinated. Still not having in-house visits. Those who can are coming out to the garden and visiting with their loved ones, but we've been using every avenue of technology, FaceTime and everything that could be used to keep them in touch with, the, with, their, with their relatives. Now Thompson says she and all of her staff members have received their first dose of the vaccine and they're now waiting on the second. She says it is a hope that persons in the general community will do their research and get vaccinated as well because right now we're still seeing cases increasing and um, persons still saying that, that they're not going to be vaccinated. So we're really hoping that they will do their research. So my colleagues are working overtime and in the hospitals and, and we thank them for the magnificent job they're doing. And we're just hoping that the general public take heed and have themselves vaccinated so we can all be safe and get back to some normalcy because it's really been stressful not being able to get on with the regular day-to-day -day visits and the hugs my grandchildren, they say, and Mama, when are we going to be able to hug? I say as soon as everybody's vaccinated fully and then we'll have those hugs and visitations. It's Halia Hall, ZNS Network News. COVID-19 has claimed another life in the Bahamas as new cases surge with the addition of 75 new cases. The deceased is a 73-year-old woman of New Providence who died Thursday, bringing the death toll to 222. As for the new cases, 61 are in New Providence, two on Grand Bahama, two on the Berry Islands, and two on Andrus, and eight on Cat Island. By breakdown, males account for 39 and women 36 of the cases. 51 people are hospitalized, with four in the intensive care unit. The total case count now stands at 11,397. Of that number, 876 are active. 
Officials from the Ministry of Education are making plans to memorialize former Deputy Director of Education Clarence Carroll, who passed away on Grand Bahama on April 25th at the age of 80. Friends of the distinguished educator gathering today to remember him as they prepare to say their final goodbyes this weekend. Rumiko Knowles has more. Saddened by the passing of the former educator district superintendent of education, Ivan Butler says the Grand Bahama Bimini and the Keys district will honor and recognize his contribution in the form of tribute and song at the memorial service. We are inviting all educators, past and present, to join in with the Ministry of Education in recognizing this outstanding gentleman. And so again, uh, we wish students, teachers, parents, and community-minded citizens to all come out and worship and let's give Mr. Carroll a grand final farewell. Principal of the Freeport Primary School, Gia Walker, says that when she thinks of Mr. Carroll, her thoughts are that of a man who was giant in stature. Former senior education official Violet Stubbs adds that during this week, which is recognized as Teacher Appreciation Week, it is only fitting to recognize Carroll. My earliest memories of Mr. Carroll was when I first was placed in the Western District and he was a person who was keen about seeing schools run properly and school management. I like to say he was the master of policies, procedures and practices. Mm. And when it came to history, facts and statistics, he was your man of business. I've got to know him as one of the most brilliant brains in education. He was so intelligent. He was knowledgeable on almost any and every subject, especially when it came to governments and countries, how they should be governed and run, and in particular education. Pat Neely, former district education officer in East Grand Bahama, and former educator Hezekiah Dean, remembering the good times they all shared with Carol. I was a boy, and um, my cousin had an old guitar, which we tried to play but couldn't. And he picked it up and tuned it, and he started playing some Beatles music <laughs> because he had just returned from London. And the Be Beatles were popular at that time. And I was fascinated by what he could do on the guitar, just like that. And uh, as a result of that, I really got myself into guitar playing. I've been playing for years myself. He had a heart of gold. Very compassionate person, but he was also very, very stern in what he believed in. If he believed in something, forget it. That was it. He was stubborn on that point, but he was, like Mr. George said, very, very generous, very gentle and kind. I don't think I want to say much more because I'm tearing up right now. Former educator Cecil Thompson is inviting educators to the memorial as a number of persons will be on hand paying tribute to the fallen hero. Legendary Jay Mitchell, Rudy Roberts, Cooling Waters, and others. And so it's going to be that kind of... Uh, uh, Memorial. Now the memorial service will take place on Friday, May 21st at the community at Hard Tabernacle Church of God of Prophecy at 6 p.m. And on the following day, which is Saturday, May 22nd, loved ones will gather at the Pro Cathedral of Christ the King at 11 a.m. to say their final farewell to Clarence Carroll. Ramiko Knowles, ZNS Network News. Stay with us, there's more news right after this break. Take your time, take your time. You sure, right here? Money short. Sure. You sure? All right. All Money right. short. Sure. Okay, okay. Miss, 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 miss. Sick. You know Lou's a buy-in, right? Oh, well, you must be getting kids be late. Nah, nah, I ain't bring no money like that. Plus, you know you greedy. Well, today is your lucky day. Oh, check out the ZNS Shopping Network. See what deals they have on food. Look here. Wait, my cap got some super deals. Check it out.
You got a $25 coupon for $15 and a $20 coupon for $10. <laughs> well, my cap it is. All right, hey, I roll in with you, eh? Log on to ZNSShoppingNetwork.com and get your deals today. You all thinking about catching a trip? Get all fresh up and catch the sailing with Valeria Caribbean. Passenger prices start at only $120 per way. And you love the onboard amenities while you relax and enjoy the view. Plus, the ferry is secured with all the latest COVID-19 protocols. Once you're done shopping, you're back home in no time with no hassle getting your packages. Bin start at $150. And the best thing is when you travel with your cargo, you eliminate the manifesting fees. It's easy, fast, and affordable. Book your trip now at www.valeriacaribbean.com. Ezra Fitness is a fully equipped gym located in the Ravens Mall. We offer boxing, cardio, weight resistance, outside training, CrossFit. We have a wide variety of machines for every body part. Um, most of the machines go from, I'd say, about 5 pounds up to about 200 pounds. And we have different stations with the sanitizing bottles and the napkins. We encourage everybody to wipe down the machines every time they use it. Bring a towel you know, to create a barrier between yourself and the machine. We have CrossFit classes and boxing classes. The times and the schedule changes. We have Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp. So um, most, of our, most of our handles are just Nesbitt Fitness Gym. We're open between the hours of 5 a.m. until 7.30 p.m. Monday to Friday. Saturday, we're open from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Mayday, Mayday, get 50% off for H.A. and Berlioni long sleeve shirts now at Esquire's Men's Store in the Lacayan Shopping Plaza. Esquire's for the best in menswear. Your number one news team covering the North. The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. The Falcons Boys Club honoring a longtime businessman in the community. This weekend celebrations was just the beginning of what the club hopes to be a monthly occurrence. Founder of the Falcons Boys Club, Darren Roll, says that one of the things he and his partners want to do going forward is to honor organizations and families making a difference throughout the Grand Bahama community. Roll says that this will take place every month and honorees will be recognized for their good deeds. I believe that this center provides an opportunity for us to be able to do so. And Shaky out of 8 Maroc, Rangoon McIntosh out of 8 Maroc, and myself, we work together with our kids and we just saw fit that once a month, we're going to either be in the community of Freeport or in the community of West Grand Bahama somewhere doing some sort of basketball. So I'm just thankful to ZNS again for being able to be a part of this day. I'm thankful for the Solomon family to be able to come and be able to allow us to do this for them. They are the owners of Crosstown. And we know that Crosstown is a major shopping mall and a major convenience store, a shopping store here on the island of Grand Bahama. And this family have contributed probably for the past 50 years to young men and young people in Grand Bahama. And we just saw fit today to be able to honor them. The first honoree to be recognized, owner of the Crosstown Plaza, Hugh Solomon. He says it was truly his pleasure to be highlighted. It's a privilege and a pleasure to be here with Mr. Roll today and just to be considered to be here as a part of his great organization and all the good things that him and all the other volunteers are doing for the community and our boys. I think it's a very good molding tool for the future of all 
the young men of this country. And I'm just delighted to be here with him. Also in attendance, Dr. Earl Lee, former president of Landmark Baptist College. Roll attended the college in Florida, and Dr. Lee says that Roll has always kept in touch with him over the years about his work, and he's very excited to be on island to see the work firsthand. The real thing is better than the picture you have in your mind uh, for what is, what is accomplished, and to see all the young lives and the young men that are being impacted and affected by it tells me that those years of teaching and training and into Darren have, have borne wonderful fruit. Founder of A1 Hoops, Ramon Shaky Dames, adding that Roll saw the work he was doing in 8 Mile Rock and invited his boys to spend the day with the Falcons Boys Club. He says he's looking forward to continued collaboration. And for us to be able to bring the kids up from 8 Mile Rock, and just give them more exposure, you know? Not all the time we have to stay down in Morocco with the kids, we can bring them up. And I just wanna say thank you once again. And if we come together like this all the time, we can do something special. Megan Shepard, Sudden Ass Network. The Royal Bahamas Police Force partnering with 8 Mile Rock High School, recognizing four students for just plain honesty. Ninth graders Christina Jean and Chanel Duncombe, along with 10th grader Tanisha Jones and 11th grader Shimiko Albury, were the recipients of the Honesty Award program. Superintendent Gregory Lockhart, officer in charge of the 8 Mile Rock Division, telling us that he hopes this initiative will build a strong bond between police and students. Started here in Eat My Rock with the Honesty Initiative. It was a brainchild of my predecessor, Superintendent Walter Henderson, and I continued with the plan. Um, we went into the school and I tasked the administration to identify students from each grade level, each grade level um, who would display some honesty, integrity, some uprightness. We need that out of our youths today. And what would happen? All of those names would be placed into a pool and the best student would win the award and they would be treated by the police. They would be given a certificate and treated to lunch um, for the day. Carl Camp Johnson, vice principal of H. Mile Rock High School, says the four student recipients were selected from a group that teachers consider most deserving is to send the names any grade level any class to, to the office with those students who would have displayed any form of honesty whether it was finding some money bringing information on something that could have helped somebody else or whatever and so we would have gotten information we would have got some names and so we I met with Mr. Lockhart and we from the names that we got, we selected one student each month in order to recognize. That's a check on stories making news, and now we go to Jay Philippe for your check on sports. Good evening, I'm Jay Philippe and welcome to Sports. Well, help is on the way for A1 Hoops Basketball Camp, one of the newest sports programs in 8 Mile Rock. A local fast food restaurant stepping up in a major way after a story aired about a young man who started a basketball camp for youngsters in the 8 Mile Rock community with no assistance. Burger King decided to give him a helping hand by donating shirts, basketballs, along with other equipments to A1 Hoops Basketball Camp, which is held every Saturday at Bartlett Hill Primary School. Marketing coordinator for Burger King, Olivia Colley, says that business functions of the community and as such is their responsibility to give back in a way that they can. There is a saying, it takes a village to raise a child. And thanks to ZNS, Corporate Bahamas saw the story of a young man that recognized the need to invest in the youth of the Edmara community. As Corporate Bahamas and our commitment to our community, we've decided to donate basketball equipment to the A1 Hoops basketball camp. This will allow Mr. Ramon Shaky Dams burden to be a bit lighter and to focus on the needs of the youth in that particular community. Camp coordinator Ramon Shaky Dames expressing thanks to Burger King for the donations. It makes me feel so great because 
it shows me that you know people are actually taking notice to what's going on down in Mara. And like I really appreciate it, what's going on. I wish I could have some of the kids there too. It, it would have been even better to see the, see the joy and the smile on their faces. Professional basketball player Ken Twan Smith made a brief trip home for the offseason he played his high school basketball at St. George's under head coach Darrell Sayers, who reflected on his growth. One thing to be proud of more than anything else is him getting his education. And him keep coming back to the program to help, you know, whether it's give advice or share what he has with the young people, whether it's a jersey or a shirt, he'll bring it back. I mean, these are the kind of things that, for me as a coach, we live for. And, and like I always say, you know, it's a team effort. Switching gears now to tennis, the Bahamas Pure Water and Ice Junior National Tennis Tournament is scheduled to begin this weekend at the YMCA Tennis Courts. It is the first tennis event on Grand Bahama since last year. It is also a ranking event for all players participating. That's a quick check on sports. I'm Jay Philippe. Be blessed. transformed my life. It gave me the opportunities that I needed to succeed. I benefited from their affordability and was able to complete my associate's degree on time. Their day, evening, and weekend classes meant that I didn't have to leave home or quit my job to pursue my dreams. Generous scholarships and installment plans made it easy for me to cope financially. BIBT was the right choice for me. Why not make it your choice? Apply today at BIBTBahamas.com. Island Bedding is the Bahamas' leading manufacturer in mattress sets. But did you know, we also carry top quality products like pillows, comforters, sheets, and much more. Our furniture line is also expanding to meet the needs of those rebuilding. We have bedroom sets, sofa beds, recliners, accent pieces, and so much more. Come and experience Island Bedding today, where everybody deserves their own island. Come on down to World Wholesale on Queens Highway in the Bamboo East Complex, opposite Jaeger Funeral Home, where we sell the highest quality hurricane impact windows, doors, metal roofs, and hurricane shutters at the best prices you can find. Visit our store Monday to Friday. Hey guys, welcome back to Health Bites. Once again, my name is Alex. I'm the marketing manager here at the Fitness Connection. Today, we're going to be talking about a few tips that can help give you that fresh summer glow all year round. Of course, the first tip, don't roll your eyes, drink water. Water is really, really important for not just making sure that your body stays hydrated, but making sure that your skin stays soft, hydrated, and supple. So make sure that you're getting at least eight glasses of water in a day, especially with the temperature starting to increase with summer coming. Another thing that can have a really positive effect on your appearance is supplementing with something like collagen. Collagen is actually a protein that makes up not just your joints, but also is important for your hair, skin, and nails. So it's really, really easy to see exactly how taking a collagen supplement can provide benefits for your beauty from the inside out. Last but not least, to help lock in all of that work that you've been doing from within, you're gonna wanna make sure to moisturize your skin. Even if you have oily skin, it's still really important to lock in that moisture, especially, like I said, as the summer months come, you don't wanna dry out. So if you do have oily skin, you can pick a light moisturizer, like the Aura Glow here, or if you're looking for something a little bit more heavy, you can try a natural oil, like Yoyoba. We have a wide variety of these at the Fitness Connection, so we can find the perfect one that will be helpful to you. If you guys are interested in any of the supplements that I spoke about in the tip today, make sure you stop by your nearest Fitness Connection location. We have two in Nassau, two in Freeport. We can help get you all the information that you need. ZNS Shopping Network is the place for deals. Go to www.znsshoppingnetwork.com to start shopping for deals today. You can find a wide variety of products online to choose from, as well as discounted gift certificates from some of your favorite stores, restaurants, hotels, and even car rentals. Yes, folks, you heard me right. Some of the stores on the ZNS Shopping Network are offering discounted gift certificates applicable on almost every item in the store. That means you can now purchase a gift certificate at a reduced cost and save lots of money on your next purchases. So if you like deals like me when you shop, log on to www.znsshoppingnetwork.com and click the Shop Now button today. Your number one news team covering the North. The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. 
Farkasin, you are our Facebook friend of the day. Thank you so much for joining us. That's going to do it for us here to North, but be sure to stay tuned as the Bahamas tonight continues. On behalf of the entire news team here to North, I'm Megan Shepard. Have a wonderful evening. In the Bahamas tonight, the National Report, the Attorney General condemns the predatory practices of rich countries. A new Providence woman loses her life to COVID. And the Free National Movement ratifies another two for 2022. Those stories and more when the Bahamas tonight, the National Report returns. ZNS Shopping Network is the place for deals. Bahamas, get ready for our national launch coming June 1st, 2021. For the first time ever, any store can advertise their sale items or discounted coupons on ZNS. And you get TV and radio commercials at never before seen prices. So if you got stuff and you want to put it on sale, we will tell the entire Bahamas about it. So merchants, log on to ZNS Shopping Network.com and click the Merchant Inquiry button button and get started. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC's Dollar Holla Deals. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Akash Lopendo. Welcome to the Bahamas Tonight, the National Report. Thanks so much for joining us. Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Senator the Honorable Carl Bethel, mincing no words in the upper chamber this morning, charging that it is absolutely abhorrent that major countries are hogging up available vaccines. This on the heels of the Pan American Health Organization's recent appeal for wealthy countries with more means and COVID-19 vaccines to share excess doses with those who don't have as many and the Bahamas falls within that category there has not been a collapse of global uh, uh, comity civility or such a magnitude since we had World War II. the whole fabric of international cooperation international respect and mutual support seems to have been uh, to have evaporated in the face of this this virus where it's every man for himself every country for themselves and this is really 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 a matter that is is totally unacceptable Bethel was at the time leading off debate on a resolution to extend the emergency powers COVID-19 order to August 13th. The government sees this as necessary as the Bahamas wrestles a troubling third wave that has led to increasing cases, hospitalizations and deaths straining the health care system. Making matters worse, there's a countrywide nursing shortage. The major countries to our north um, have been in the habit of recruiting our nurses. Nurses who we educated from preschools at the public expense all the way up and assisted in, in getting their qualifications all the way up. Um, and yet they are, um, they are being, and, and it's, it's, it's a reality. I do not blame them for taking these opportunities because at the end of the day we only have one life to live um, but i point out that it is it is a relentless and predatory practice well much as it did before the opposition rejects the idea of extending the order taking the lead senator fred mitchell cited the irony in the government pushing to do so this time around in march of last year when this whole pandemic sprung on the Bahamas, there were, I would say, fewer than 20 or so cases, maybe fewer than a dozen. At that time, the whole country was shut down with fewer than a dozen cases. And now there are thousands of cases, but the country is being opened up. However, Bethel accused his colleague of misleading the Senate. The difference now 
is that beginning really in early, well, late December and early January, there was talk of variants and the potential of variants. And those variants have now spread all over the world and the way in which and the people who are affected have sh has shifted from the most vulnerable to more younger and younger people. And that is where we are. So yes, we open because we are vaccinating our people. People have learned and have more <laughs> discipline, but there are some elements in society who have COVID fatigue. And this poses challenges that we must be able to surmount. Thank you. That said, COVID-19 has claimed another life in the Bahamas, even as new cases surge with the addition of another 75. The deceased, a 73-year-old New Providence woman who died Thursday, bringing the countrywide death toll to 222. As were the new cases, 61 are on New Providence, eight on Cat Island, and two each on Grand Bahama, the Berry Islands, and Andros. Broken down, that's 39 males and 36 females. As of Wednesday, 51 people were in hospital, four of them in the intensive care unit. Of the 11,397 local cases, 876 are active. Some 67 people recovered on Wednesday. Meantime, Cat Island Administrator Dale Jellin says residents there are open to the new 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew that begins tonight due to rising COVID-19 cases. Several days ago, that island reported 17 cases. Today, another eight, bringing its total case count to 43. Jellin says while residents have been largely following protocols, they support whatever must be done to curtail rising infections and even anticipate further restrictions. We are welcoming all the measures that are being put in place, the first few measures from 8 p.m. until 5 p.m. in the morning. And residents are very welcoming of it and accepting of it. And we found it to be told necess totally necessary. Some residents are anticipating even more restrictions to be placed in the island. The more stringent restrictions need to be placed on the island in order to completely stop the movement of people in order to curtail the spread of the virus that is here on the island. Now, over on Andros, Mygrove Key Administrator Jacqueline Colley says residents' only concern regarding the newly imposed 8 p.m. curfew is how it will impact their ability to catch crabs, a major economic driver for that island. We do not have much of a nightlife, and, 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 it, does, and it does not um, affect too many persons or businesses in regards to the curfew being imposed. And the last time curfew was imposed, the residents were allowed by the competent authority, you know, to harvest the harvest of crabs, you know, which is a big thing here in Mangrove Key. And 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 the residents are, um, are hoping that the competent authority will, you know, take that into consideration, being the beginning of the crabbing season. Andros experienced a jump on Monday when it pulled in another nine cases. Here's where she believes the source of the rise in cases lies. In, in Mangrove Key, you know, um, people are practicing social protocols and are wearing a mask and so forth. And, you know, the, the, it's hard to say whether it's central north with where the figures are coming from because it's just Andros generally. Well, still to come, a breakthrough in the government high school fatal stabbing incident and BTVI's president shares advice with recently terminated Atlantis employees. Those stories and more when the National Report continues. And remember to tune in to the morning edition with LaDawn Davis and Charles Fisher at 7 o'clock weekday mornings. We also have news updates at every hour starting at 2 p.m. You can then watch live at 5 with Amajal Knowles, followed by The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition at 6.30. And the National Report live at 7 p.m. All right here on the ZNS Network. This portion of the news is brought to you by Sun Oil Limited Shell, fueling journeys that matter. Welcome to a world 
where hope is still loud, where dreams are still relevant, and determination has no substitute. Welcome to a nation where the people are still warm, resilient, and innovative. And Commonwealth Bank is at the center of it all, giving innovation and progress an extra push for more than 60 years. We're here for Bahamians because we are Bahamian. Commonwealth Bank, your leader in personal banking services. Aha! The $20 combo. Unlimited talk, yo. To every network you know. Across the Bahamas, I got six gigs of data. Plus unlimited cha-cha. It's a scroll over two. Now let me check my people. On Facebook and WhatsApp. BTC is where it's I rock my combo. Your BTC 10-day combo is now only $20 and is supersized with a new low price. BTC, do it again. You know that feeling you get when you have an uncontrollable desire for fried chicken? That's the KFC. A substance that stimulates your senses to identify the aroma of our secret recipe or an extra crispy crunch from any distance. It's invisible to the naked eye, but you can feel it traveling throughout your body, taking control so you can enjoy a juicy bite of KFC. Ignite your senses with KFC. Join up for life insurance. Secure the ones that you love. Family Guardian, we offer full protection. Join the family, join the family, Family Guardian. Protect the ones you love, a friend that you can trust. Family Guardian. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's. I'm loving it. Two male juveniles in police custody for Tuesday's fatal stabbing of an 11th grader at the government high school. Police say the teens are assisting them with this investigation. The tragedy, though, has given health education officer Antoinette Anderson the opportunity to use her expertise on the ground and provide support and help to government high school staff. She insists it's time to equip high school students with the necessary skills to manage conflict resolution to curtail any potential violence on school campuses. Talking it out, taking time. You can't just act when someone does something to you. You have to think about what you're going to do because everything you do has a repercussion. This today, the repercussion is one family has to plan a funeral, the other one is waiting to find out what is going on with their child, and two families have children that are going to be locked up. What are the long-term repercussions? How do, we, how do we prevent fast actions that bring devastating reactions? I think, for me, a regular psych class, especially for 12th graders, I will say now, 10 to 12th graders, bring in some kind of psychology class for them so that they learn human behavior. Doesn't have to be college level, but something that would give them strategies on how to cope and how to deal. Well, ZNS News learning that many of Atlantis's terminated employees turned in their property to resort officials today. Meantime, Bahamas Technical and Vocational Institute President Dr. Robert Robinson is encouraging those workers to seriously consider going back to school as an alternative option to sustaining their livelihood. One of the things with respect to employees in any sector that have been let go is they really need to think about reskilling, upskilling, and we see that because of the pandemic throughout the Caribbean, throughout the world. So we're going to reach out to Atlantis, uh, as we have done to other employers, and advise them that we have a variety of short, certified courses to help them upskill. And so if they have an interest in that, we have a variety of different programs, from construction programs to IT programs uh, to programs in hospitality and uh, trades. So we can reach out to them over a variety of different programs, and we want to do that right away. The BTVI head feels restraining will help these individuals keep abreast, retraining rather, will help these individuals keep abreast of other global challenges, changes. 
Well, I think there's two things. First, it is a global issue. I mean, a lot of people have been made redundant across the world, and those people are upskilling. And so in the Bahamas, we need to reflect on that ourselves. And certainly, I appreciate that those folks who are in that position, they're probably traumatized, as, as you would expect. And uh, we want to try to give them some options. Um, like the analogy I heard from somebody at a conference the other day is, if you're given a lemon, make lemonade. <laughs> And so we do have some options, and so it's certainly something they should consider. Uh, the cost is reasonable. There's government support in terms of scholarships, and we certainly want to help those people who need that help. Construction to rebuild Portuski Dock better following last month's massive blaze last month to begin very soon. So says Minister of Agriculture and Marine Resources, the Honorable Michael Pintard, who confirmed with us today that ministry officials continue to meet with those from the related government agencies. We had uh, sufficient poles now in order to put down in the water pilings. We have completed the cleanup of the debris that has been in the water. Um, we had funds approved and we have completed that process. We have, we have also now processed funding in order to buy what we believe will be the majority of the building supplies uh, required to rebuild the six stalls, um, and which we expect uh, we will be able to take charge of those building materials as early as next week. We have also processed some funding to contribute uh, to the labor side, which we fully expect that vendors themselves would also be involved in the process of, of, of um, sourcing some of the labor required uh, to rebuild. Works also ongoing to finalize the architectural drawings and infrastructural needs, although running water and power has yet to be installed. Minister Pintard says he wished the reconstruction exercise could move faster, but there's a process that must be followed. Further, funds not initially allocated for such a project must be secured. When there are house fires, there is a built-in system in government to respond to family members who have been displaced by house fires. There isn't a similar process for persons who have been uh, affected by fire, which would be the owners of the building and the employees. Um, and so we have, we, we have sought at the ministry to find creative ways to raise the building material, which, which we believe we substantially have, to raise some uh, capital within the government system towards the, uh, the labor side of it. We spoke with uh, social services and uh, the national feeding program to also uh, identify those family members uh, through the system, through their ordinary system in order to assist with any emergency uh, food needs as well. The Free National Movement has added another two newcomers to its 2022 political lineup. Communication specialist Maxine Seymour will replace Lanisha Roll as the party's standard bearer in the Seabreeze constituency. Quentin Presenti will meantime go head to head with the Progressive Liberal Party's longtime incumbent Glennis Hannah Martin for Angliston. The FNMC Seymour and Presenti is bringing new ideas to the government, working tirelessly to move the Bahamas forward. Foreign Affairs Minister the Honorable Darren Henfield and Haitian Chargé d'Affaires Anthony Brutus having a frank discussion on topical issues, from the extension of restriction on travel from Haiti and the related situation with COVID-19, to the consideration of a revised visa facilitation for Haitian residents wishing to come here, the demolition of shanty towns in Abaco, to the recent pronouncement about Haiti's social and living conditions. With respect to obtaining Bahamian visas, the minister explained that there were a number of technical issues with the online process that needed to be rectified. The Chargé in turn proposed a review of the existing visa facilitation for Haitian nationals with Canadian, Schengen, UK and US visas. This he believes would lead to an increase in Haitian tourists traveling to the Bahamas. In the case of unregulated communities, Hanfield reiterated the government's position regarding laws on land ownership and its use. The meeting ended with the promise of a renewed consideration of examples of other areas favorable to enriching bilateral relations. Well, a new Bahamian ambassador extraordinary and a permanent representative to the United Nations officially sworn in. The honor bestowed on His Excellency Chet Donovan Nemour in, short, in a short ceremony at the UN's headquarters in New York. 
The newly appointed ambassador presenting his letters of credence to the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres on Monday. His Excellency's role new comes after decades of service to the Bahamas, previously serving as Deputy Director of Economic Planning in the Ministry of Finance and the founding secretary of the Securities Commission of the Bahamas. His Excellency, however, is by no means new to representing the country in the United Nations. His participation on behalf of both CARICOM and the Bahamas dating back to 2015. While at the ceremony, the ambassador spoke on a multitude of topics, hailing the importance of the United Nations work in the Bahamas, while thanking them for the support provided in the aftermath of Hurricane Dorian. The Foreign Affairs Minister, also spending some time with the coupe de, de sage of the ambassador designate of the France to the Bahamas, Arnaud de Sori Despremont, albeit virtually. During the brief meeting, the minister thanked the French government for the humanitarian assistance and relief it provided the Bahamas following 2019's Hurricane Dorian. Similar sentiments shared regarding France's decision to remove the Bahamas from the list of non-cooperative states and territories in tax matters, with Henfield stressing the importance of the goalposts not shifting continuously. The ambassador acknowledged that the removal was homage to work the Bahamas did. The two also spoke of assistance in French language training and climate change reform. Both sides agreed to continue the deepening of relations. The Coupe de Sage will formally present his letters of credence to the Governor General at a later date. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Mario thought he could have his cake and eat it too. He almost found out the hard way that if you don't insure your home for the full replacement value, when it comes time to make a claim, you won't get the full payout. It's called the condition of average. If your $200,000 home is destroyed by a hurricane, but you only insured it for $100,000, half the value, you'll only get half of that $100,000 payout. Actually, less than that. Because there's also a deductible, which will be deducted from your payout. Check your home insurance policy for the Condition of Average Clause and ask your insurance agent or broker how Condition of Average would affect you. This message was brought to you by the Insurance Commission of the Bahamas. Protecting the... In For the proof that BTC has the best fiber network anywhere, here it is. We call it Elevate Bahamas. Super fast internet speeds and more than 350 miles of fiber nationwide. It's just another way that BTC is making incredible investments in communities across our country. So our Elevate Bahamas project has its phase one plans. And our phase one plans would be our triple play bundles, for example. So our triple play bundles, as we've been talking about, have been as low as $99. We have 100 megs minimum speed in our triple play bundles. We have 157 channels, talk, um, for voice, where you have the ability to call the US, UK, and Canada. Our plans go up to $154.99, allowing our customers to receive up to 300 megabits, over 220 channels, as well as talk to the US, UK, and Canada. So it's very important for our, our customers to understand that in some cases, we offer over 70% more than our competitor. And that's important for everybody to know that our prices are best in class because we provide so much value. Our services are definitely superior when it comes to our fiber network. We have the best and the robust network out there. We may live on different islands, but as a company, our vision is united. As the fastest and largest broadband provider, BTC has raised its performance, so now you can raise yours. These are still the moments that move us. I'm Corval Pyfrom. Continue to be well and be back here. Next, BTC Connection. When you want to spend money on your child's place, who you going to call? Yeah. 
Visit the new Talton showroom, which is internationally recognized as the finest tile showroom in the Caribbean, located in the Builders Mall on Wolf Road. Tiles on everything. Shell Unleaded improves your fuel economy, giving increased miles per gallon, allowing you to do more of what you really want. Special additives used in Shell Unleaded improve your engine's efficiency. So, go further with Shell Unleaded. Venture out to beaches, junkanoo, and festivals, and bring home memories that will last a lifetime. Shell, fueling journeys that matter. The Rehabilitation of Offenders Committee reviewing more than 30 applications. Chairman Paul Farkasen says this figure does not represent the growing number of people applying daily. So far, the committee has expunged just under 15 criminal records. The latest, Perry Mortimer, who was charged 19 years ago for possession of dangerous drugs with intent to supply. Grand Bahama. We've got 25 applications. In Bimini, we've got eight. And in Exuma, we have one. Grant of expungement out of that lot, 19 applications. We've deferred 24 to the prerogative of mercy. And we have deferred for counseling four applicants. The committee felt by having heard those applicants that we felt that they needed further counseling before the committee could make a final determination on the application. Ferguson says the committee hears matters from a cross-section of applicants, particularly young people. All thrust under the act is for young persons and first-time offenders. That is what this committee is all about. All other offenses other than the seven are considered. But in addition, the law provides uh, for us to focus on young persons in the country. And you know, there are more law-abiding young people in this country than those who are going down the wrong path. And therefore, you want to use this occasion as an encouragement to our young persons to stay out of a life of crime. We turn our attention now to the Daily Crime Report. Family members are worried sick about 15-year-old Glendina Brainin, who was last seen at her Wilson Track home at 11 a.m. this past Tuesday. Authorities describe the teen as 5 feet 2 inches tall with light brown complexion and slim build. 32-year-old Jose Augustin Prado of the Dominican Republic is also missing. No word, though, when and where he was last seen. The only characteristics police sharing in a bulletin is that he has light brown complexion and is heavy build. Also not seen, fellow Dominican Republic native 48-year-old Rafael Alvarado. Alvarado, also described as having a light brown complexion and medium build. If you can assist police locate any of the three people just named, contact the Criminal Investigation Department, and that's at 502-9991, 502-992-911, your nearest police station, or download the P3Tips app. Drug enforcement and canine unit officers executed a search warrant at a residence on Revival Faithway shortly after 9 o'clock yesterday morning and found suspected marijuana and several suspected marijuana plants under cultivation. The drugs weighed 7 pounds with an estimated street value of $7,000. A male was arrested in connection with the matter. It's a common occurrence, so common that it's safe to presume more motorists do it than not. Use your cell phone while driving. Our police are again advising that that's not only dangerous, but against the law. Desmond Saunders has this update. Distracted driving is a dangerous activity. 
and involves talking or texting on your cell phone while operating a motor vehicle. And apparently, police traffic department officials are seeing an increase in this practice. That's according to Constable Princeton Jr. It's a serious matter because if you get distracted while operating your motor vehicle, I mean, by cell phone, you might your, your phone might drop because you are so into that phone. You can cost someone else's life. Pedestrians are crossing the street. You forget, oh, my phone ringing. You knock a pedestrian down. So it's it's a it's a big deal for us, and we 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 have had numerous amounts of complaints referenced to accidents where persons were distracted by their cell phones. Police also acknowledge that using a cell phone while driving creates an enormous potential for deaths and injuries. International studies suggest that drivers using a mobile phone are four times more likely to be involved in a crash than when a driver does not use a phone. If it is that you have an emergency call, say for instance you have a sick child and you have to be on the phone 24 7, I ask that you pull to the side of the street, don't inconvenience another driver, or try to, to find some vacant area so that you can stay there and go on your mobile device. A call doesn't take that long. So I recommend that pulling to the side of the street or finding an open area to pull down, uh, to park your vehicle and utilize your cell phone would be the right thing to do. And free health devices are good. Bluetooth in your vehicles, they are good. These things, the vehicles are upgrading now, so you, you have, whereas you don't need to have your phone in your hand. And the police traffic division reminds motorists that cell phone use while driving is against the law. It's a hefty fine. It's a $500 fine. And it's up to the magistrate's discretion to reduce the fine. However, we, we, we do try to discourage persons from using their cell phones. So that's why we give them that hefty fine. Because in, in, in the course of, of, of driving, it's considered dangerous and reckless driving. Police traffic officials advise that prevention is key to avoid accidents on the streets, and they are sparing no efforts to enforce the rules of the road. Desmond Saunders, ZNS Network News. Well, as we head to the break, we'd like to thank all our viewers watching us live on our social media platforms. And just in case you missed the news, be sure to head there to catch up. Stay with us. There's more after the break. The Bahamas Bureau of Standards and Quality, or BBSQ, ensures better business practices in the Bahamas through the development and promotion of voluntary and mandatory national standards. Standards are guidelines which ensure that goods and services are produced with the safety of consumers and the environment in mind. BBSQ has developed standards for the manufacturing of bottled water. All vehicles brought into the country are also subject to standards. We have protocols for the poultry and egg production industry. National standards also apply to the construction industry. We are setting quality management and quality assurance guidelines to ensure that medical laboratories are competent. Standards help businesses to reduce expenditure, improve customer satisfaction, access new markets, reduce environmental impact, increase market share, and innovate. For consumers, Standards provide improved choice, lower costs, greater assurance, compatibility, consistency, and better product information. We believe that standards matter to everyone everywhere. We are the Bahamas Bureau of Standards and Quality, where quality is our standard. BBSQ, coming for through. you, for me. of the fatal stabbing of an 11th grade government high school student, Education Minister Jeffrey Lloyd, along with National Security Minister Marvin Dames, recently addressed staff and students at the school in light of the tragedy. Be grieve, be hurt, and yes, some angry. And I offer you my entire being and all of the resources of the Ministry of Education. This one incident is a reflection of the challenges we face throughout our communities. The question is not what's going on on our school campuses, because this 
is a singular incident, but what it is really is a microcosm of what's taking place throughout our society. On Tuesday, May 18th, 2021, an altercation involving four male students took place on the school's campus, resulting in two of the students being stabbed, one fatally, the other sustaining critical injuries. It's most unfortunate, but it tells you the amount of work we need to do holistically. That is community. That's parents from where these young men are coming from. Uh, the community, all stakeholders have to invest in to our young people. Grief counselors from the Ministry of Education are on campus and assisting staff and students in need. I'm Adama Williams for Ed Talk. Want to stay in the know? Subscribe. Text 819-BMOE. That's 819-2663. Remember to like and subscribe to our social media platforms. Everyone's excited about the $8 meal of the day. Every day, it's a different six-inch sub, plus chips and a 20-ounce drink for just $8. That feels like fresh value. Come in any day of the week for one of your favorite six-inch subs. Like turkey breast, meatball marinara, sweet onion chicken teriyaki, black forest ham, Italian BMT, oven roasted chicken, and tuna. Then add chips and a 20-ounce drink, and you've got the $8 meal of the day. A great meal at a great price every day of the week, only at Subway. Aha, the $20 combo, unlimited talk, yo, to every network you know. Across the Bahamas, I got six gigs of data, plus unlimited cha-cha. It's a scroll over two, now let me check my people on Facebook and WhatsApp. BTC is where it's at. I rock my combo. Your BTC 10-day combo is now only $20 and is supersized with a new low price. BTC. An early morning blaze at the National Insurance Board office on Acklands leaves the structure gutted. Island Administrator Bradford McKenzie says the inferno started around 4 a.m. in the building that houses both NIB and 700 Wines and Spirits. He says when authorities arrived on the scene, the building was completely engulfed in flames. There was a National Insurance truck parked close to the building and a van. Those vehicles are completely destroyed. Um, Thankfully, no lives were lost, no injuries. But the funny thing is that it was raining all night last night, and everyone was amazed that in the midst of all of the rain, the, the building still was consumed. Officials haven't yet determined the cause of the blaze, but they now have to make plans to enable NIB employees to continue working. The officer in charge, uh, she lives in... Crooked Island. She is on her way over here now on a ferry, and we would discuss um, what's what's best moving forward. Uh, I believe that um, their functions will have to be uh, continue remotely because they are um, very central to the island. In fact, they were carrying out their monthly um, old age pension payments. Uh, and things of that sort. Almost 20 Bahamas Agriculture and Marine Science Institute, or BAMSI, staff members in New Providence and Andros have completed a course at CyberTech Community College. The effective supervisor, internet marketing and e-commerce, business etiquette and communications and perfecting the art of customer service were covered during the seven-week program. BAMSI staffers were able to take advantage of the newly implemented work dynamic put in place following the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. With more focus on social distancing, working remotely and flexible scheduling, a greater number of associates were able to participate in the continuing education courses simultaneously. Oh, could the 2021 Atlantic hurricane season be off to an early start? Well, meteorologists are eyeing that possibility as low-pressure system brews several miles north 
of the coast of Bermuda. Meteorologists say the system is non-tropical and has only a 30% chance of developing into an actual tropical cyclone. But should that take place, 2021 would become the sixth consecutive year the season has started before its June 1st opening. Now, though records also reflect that eight named storms have formed before the official opening date in the past 10 years alone. This year, Colorado State University has already released its findings, calling seven named storms, eight hurricanes, with four of them major. Their predictions making for yet another above average season. Oh, with that, we turn to Chief Meteorologist Basil Dean for a check on Family Island weather. Good evening, Basil. Uh, good evening, uh, Makisha. Yes, we continue to monitor that uh, area of low pressure. As you can see, they're spinning on our satellite picture. Well to the north and east of Bermuda, it is expected to start moving towards the west and then southwest later on tonight over much warmer waters. And once that happens, the probability of that becoming a subtropical cyclone by tomorrow will bump up to about 80%. So we're likely to see a subtropical uh, cyclone sometime tomorrow. Once that happens, we expect it to then shift back towards the north and then north east sometime on Sunday and Monday that will take it into more hostile environment and that will eventually uh, fizzle out. But until then we continue to have this uh, troughing now across the extreme southeast Bahamas and that will continue to support some shower activity in the southeast Bahamas during the course of tonight. Outside of our studios, partly sunny skies, temperature 83 degrees, relative humidity 50 percent, the barometric pressure 1020.7 millibars, that's 30.14 inches and the pressure is rising. The temperatures around the islands this evening, well, they are brought to you by Family Guardian Insurance Company. We're protecting you. 79 degrees in Freeport, Grand Bahama, and Green Toll Key, Marsh Harbor at 78, the Berry Island, 79. 78 in Alistair, Bimini, 79 in Harbor Island. Rock Sound, Elutra, 81 degrees, 80 in Artistan, Cat Island, Staniel Key in Exumas, and Kemp Space on Andros, 79 in Fresh Creek, Central Andros, 80s in San Salvador and Rum Key. Georgetown, Exuma, 79 degrees, 79 in Ragged Island, Clarence Town, Long Island, Crooked Island, Betsy Bay and Acklands, Matchy Town, in Agua at 81, and the Turks and Caicos Islands at 78 degrees. And your boating forecast tonight is brought to you by Builders Mall, home of FYP, the Tile King, and the Paint Center. In the Northwestern Islands, easterly winds 20 to 25 knots, very rough seas, 79 feet over the ocean. Low tide takes place at 924 tonight. In the Central and Southeastern Islands tonight, easterly winds 20 to 30 knots, wave fights 7 to 10 feet. Small craft, we're simply asking you to stay in port. And then tomorrow, Friday, for all areas, the winds swing out of the northeast at 50 to 25 knots so we see a slight reduction in those winds tomorrow wave fights down five to eight feet but still rough conditions advisory are in place for you boaters throughout low tide takes place at 10 or 3 in the morning with a high tide at 4 16 in the afternoon now on saturday in the northwestern islands that reduction continues 12 to 18 knots out of the east wave fights down three to six feet caution flags remain in place low tide at 10 56 on saturday morning high tide at 5 12 in the afternoon for the central and Southeast Annales on Saturday. Easterly winds 15 to 20 knots, wave fights 4 to 7 feet, and we'll hold that caution flag in place for you through Saturday. That's going to do it for your boating forecast. It's time now for your international temperatures, and they are brought to you by Royal Star Assurance. That's going to do it for your international temperatures brought to you by Royal Star Assurance. But stay tuned, your extended weather forecast is still ahead. Each day in May at your favorite super value and quality supermarkets. Libby Spaghetti and Meatballs, 14 and a half ounce can, $1.39. Hunt Ketchup, 32 ounce jar, $2.39. Sweet Mangoes, two for $3. Premium Bonus Strip Steaks, $7.99 per pound. Devon Corn Beef, 12 ounce can, two for $5. Super Value Winton opens Sundays, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Super Value Cable Beach opens Sundays, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Unlimited talk, yo, to every network you know.
Standards and Quality, or BBSQ, ensures better business practices in the Bahamas through the development and promotion of voluntary and mandatory national standards. Standards are guidelines which ensure that goods and services are produced with the safety of consumers and the environment in mind. BBSQ has developed standards for the manufacturing of bottled water. All vehicles brought into the country are also subject to standards. We have protocols for the poultry and egg production industry. National standards also apply to the construction industry. We are setting quality management and quality assurance guidelines to ensure that medical laboratories are competent. Standards help businesses to reduce expenditure, improve customer satisfaction, access new markets, reduce environmental impact, increase market share, and innovate. For consumers, Standards provide improved choice, lower costs, greater assurance, compatibility, consistency, and better product information. We believe that standards matter to everyone everywhere. We are the Bahamas Bureau of Standards and Quality, where quality is our standard. BBSQ, coming for through. you, for me. Hey, y'all, what's up? Hey, what's up? Mm -hmm. What y'all getting? Listen, I've been waiting to mash down some logs here. Hi, I'm Matthew. I will be you guys waiting today. Can I take your order? Oh, I've been queuing stuff for some crew for dread. Y'all see this? Uh-uh, see? This ain't gonna work. Gondo. But how do? Don't leave our children with no fish in their future. Protect our sea. Protect our way of life. Protect the Bahamas. To learn how you can help, find us on Facebook at Bahamas Protected. See the future. ZNS Total Sports is brought to you by Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center. Bahamas Golf Federation Junior Nationals all set for this weekend at the Ocean Club Golds Course. Here's BGF Junior Chairman Gina Gonzalez Rule. Actually, it's the biggest tournament that we have on a yearly basis for any of our juniors. It helps them to qualify, to travel, or to see where they stand in the country as far as junior golf is concerned. We're actually very pleased with um, the turnaround so far. Actually, we had to cut off admissions at this point because we already have 73 kids and we had actually planned for about 40 to 50 kids. So we're really pleased with the turnaround and um, we're looking to have a great tournament. The 18 old individual feature players, 10 to 13, 14 through 15, 16 through 18, boys and girls. And in the nine hole division, Boys and girls, seven and under, eight to nine, 10 to 13, and 14 to 18, only for girls. Two players looking forward to swinging this weekend is Gabriel Pratt and Weston Young. I believe that I have what it takes because, well, my last tournament, I came third in my first, that now is my first tournament. Once I keep practicing and put the work in, I believe I can do it. I feel confident. I feel like I'm, I'm going to do great. Well, a big day for the Indiana Tech Warriors at the NAIA National Baseball Championship. They won a pair of games on Wednesday and moved within one win of qualifying for the NIA, NAIA World Series. Ashton Moxie saw his first action of the tournament in an 11-6 win over Indiana Wesleyan, and he made the most of his opportunity, finishing 4-5 RBI, two runs scored. Yeshua Saint also had two hits to go along with an RBI and run scored. 
From there, the Warriors got revenge on Oklahoma Wesleyan, who beat them early in the tournament, winning 13 to 11. The Warriors and Oklahoma play a game with the winner moving on and the loser going home. As for Bryan College, their season is over after a 5-2-11 inning loss to Middle Georgia State. Wade Winberger finished 1-5 with a run scored for the season. Winberger hit 3-11 with 16 home runs. Well, the easing of COVID-19 protocols, a huge plus for four members of the CI Gibson Rattlers basketball team who were recently able to show off their skills and land college scholarships. Jonathan Benson tells us more. Charles Joseph, Sahib Sanusi, Emmanuel Alexander, and Jaden Strawn will all be headed to Northeast Community College in Nebraska this fall. To accomplish this, it really hits hard right now because I've always think about it, dream about this. And I just want to know, thank God, thank coaches for this opportunity. And I'm very excited. So, you know, I got to take advantage of this opportunity, keep working, and I'm ready. The opportunity is a blessing, you know, and I thank God for that. Because, you know, many kids in my category or just to say, around the world don't get to go to college to play college basketball, and that's a dream for just about any kid. My expectations are big just because um, I really got to work hard, try to get a better option to go to a better four-year school. Once we have in our mind that, we go over there and play our best and accomplish what we came over there to do. We'll be able to play to our best and perform. The quartet put in the time required under the watchful eyes of Coach Kevin K.J. Johnson, and he believes they are ready for whatever lies ahead. They worked extremely hard when they first came here. They, they lacked a lot of knowledge and understanding when it came to the game of basketball. They were very athletic, uh, could run, could jump, but didn't understand how to play the game the right way. In the last three years, they learned, they understood, and uh, that's why they have this opportunity today. Because Johnson always told us that, you know, we gotta work for whatever we want, and the road ain't gonna be easy, it ain't easy out there. And I got to see a piece of that, um, myself on a college visit. He always teaches us to be student leaders on and off the basketball court, and once you put the time into the gym and the effort, and it will show. Coping with COVID-19 protocols has been hard, but this group was able to persevere. Being a senior in my last year, you know, I wanted to like graduate with nationals, teachable essay championship, all of that. It was hard, but you know, I got over it. We still worked on our game, so we still won. We still travel, play games, and I still got enough games in, so it all worked out. For some, adapting to a different kind of environment is difficult, but this group of Rattlers welcomes the challenge. I expect it to be more, you know, more competitive, but. You know, I gotta keep working. I gotta adjust to the, you know, the competition, and I'll just drive just as the good as them. They have experience over us, and that's like that's the only thing I think is gonna be different. But otherwise, I think as we as we uh, play more and more games and start to adjust, we'll be good. While we look to excel on the basketball court, it's also understood hard work must also take place inside the classroom. You know, I'll make sure I stay focused in school, keep my grades up. They are student athletes, three-point students. Um, they're leaders in the school, they're all prefects. Hopefully they uh, get to um, continue to play hard and get their degrees, that's the main thing, be able to help themselves at the end of the day. ZNS Total Sports is brought to you by Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center. is a day for fun. Today is a day for family. So why should yesterday's worries affect my today? That's why I insure my family with J.S. Johnson, because their mission is to provide us with the best